guys welcome to all electronics i'm gregory and in this video we're gonna take a look on the behavior of that strange resistors we saw on the last video you will not believe in what the japanese designers did here on this design let's measure the frequency response of the resistors and let's take a look in how we convert the return loss and angle readings from the vna into an impedance measurement take your coffee and come with me so guys, I desoldered one of the input coupling capacitors here at the input and I changed the place where the resistor is soldered. So now the resistor is soldered directly to the input connector. This is the true hole resistors we saw in the last video. If you didn't see the last video, click here on the balloon. Now the only thing that the input signal sees is the resistor, so we can connect it to the VNA to measure the impedance at higher frequencies. I think it's difficult to see, but you can see that here in the middle, we don't have the capacitor and this resistor was originally soldered in parallel with the other one here. If we measure the DC resistance, we see 184 ohms. So this is a 108 resistor, probably 5% of precision. And we are thinking on the Patreon account, why they use these resistors here? Why this value? Remember, you can support the channel becoming a patron. Link in the description. We are thinking that the designers really did know what they are doing. And they actually use the parasitics of the resistor to better match to better control the response of the amplifier. And indeed, as we saw in the last video, the response was pretty, pretty amazing. And it is only controlled by these passive parts. We have only two transistors and passive components. So they did probably something very, very smart on the design of this board. And guys, for a Japanese design, we have Japanese multimeter here. Let's do a quick calibration here, guys. Let's go the center frequency of one gigahertz, faster sweep time. We have a short here. So first we calibrate magnitude. Now we calibrate the phase. We need to first compensate for the electrical length of the cable. This is very interesting, guys. The phase response we saw on the screen is very interesting because it shows how this analog equipment works. As we are doing analog calibration, we can only calibrate one point, the point where the cursor of the equipment is, the measurement cursor. All the equipment is displaying and all what the equipment is using to make the measurements are only voltages and currents on the analog domain. We don't have memory, we don't have any digital calibration to compensate the analog response over the frequency, over the sweeping frequency. This is very interesting. If we deviate the cursor from the measurement, we accumulate error in the measurement. This is not good from a measurement perspective, but for me here for the channel, this is amazing <laughs> we're gonna zero the phase you are not seeing but we are zeroing on the cursor we have a cursor here and we're gonna place the reference point at 108 degrees because we have a short a calibration short now we zero the reference and the equipment is calibrated you probably could see the cursor if we go to the phase over frequency domain here now we have the phase over frequency and the equipment is calibrated right here in the cursor i can change the cursor if we deviate from the calibration position we get a deviation on the measurement. Now the measurement plane is connected to the SMA connector of the board. And as my short connection is made from an SMA connector also, we see that actually the measurement calibration plane is right in the resistor. In my mind, when I thought to measure this, I was thinking that at one gigahertz, a true hole part with very big leads would be inductive. But actually, the resistor is capacitive. And if we follow a constant resistance circle here, we see that the resistive part is much lower than the nominal value. And we're gonna calculate this now. So clearly the Japanese designers did know what they are doing and they used the parasitic response of the resistor to create the matching network to control the response of the amplifier. I saw there are 200 ohm resistors in this connector here because I was not believing the calibration. So guys, if we remove here, please focus, okay. Now I have the response of the open cable. 
and we connect look at that guys remember guys this machine was released in the 70s and we are measuring one gigahertz with a totally analog circuit a totally analog design and taking and taking the two measurements here the phase and the return loss i have a function here on the calculator we can place let's do it together here negative 27.8 enter 62 degrees negative enter sorry for the focus let's call the macro here return loss in db and angle to z to impedance let's run <laughs> and guys actually the equipment is pretty well calibrated look at this guys 52 ohms let's reconnect the resistor now we have 11.3 negative return loss in db 42 degrees negative let's call the macro and you can see 69 ohms negative 27 imaginary impedance very very interesting the capacitive part what i'm doing wrong here guys are you seeing something wrong with this setup and before we finish the video i'm going to the whiteboard show you to explain how the impedance is calculated from the db and angle readings of the equipment today we don't have much space here but let's erase this well guys we are measuring an unknown load here of impedance z load and actually on this interface here we're exciting the load with a forward signal and we measure the reflected signal gamma the reflection parameter that is also equal to S11 comes from the ratio of the reflected wave and the forward wave we are using to excite the load. As we are reading gamma as a magnitude in dB and an angle in degrees, we need to first convert this measurement here to the actual value of gamma, that is an imaginary number. So what actually is gamma? And after we can calculate Z load using the gamma the magnitude is actually 10 to the measured return loss in db over 20 we use 20 here in the denominator because this is a ratio of voltages these are the voltages of the forward and backwards reflected waves now we have the normalized amplitude of the gamma vector and we know the angle so gamma actually is m times cosine of the angle plus mj sine of the angle this is the complex representation of this vector here and from gamma we can calculate the impedance zls the system impedance fifth ohms times one plus gamma over one minus gamma this is how we calculate the impedance using a return loss and angle measurement and actually probably would be better to call this the return loss and here the return loss in db and the angle and now we can calculate the magnitude using the return loss to calculate gamma to calculate the impedance well guys i hope you enjoyed this video remember you can support the channel becoming a patron link on the description give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and i see you next week on the next video of all electronics